Claire Hanna, because you're running in South Belfast. Well, it is, of course, about much more than Brexit, but Brexit dominated the last parliament and absolutely it's the big front. And indeed, a lot of the challenges that we're going to have in health and a lot of the challenges that we're going to have uh, restoring uh, the Assembly are underpinned by Brexit and the disaster that it has been and the economic stalemate and the damage to relationships that so we've sustained. So will Remain mean that you can take Emma Little Pengeli's seat? Well, I, I, I believe that it's forefront of people's mind, yes, and I believe as somebody that has campaigned extensively for Remain since before uh, and, and post uh, the referendum, yes, that I think on that issue people will place their trust on me in me because I think in South Belfast people have regretted um, the fact that every single vote that was placed in front of it, our MP voted for a harder form of Brexit. And what about the SDLP standing aside for Jonathan Lucan in North Belfast or Sinn Féin standing aside for you in South Belfast? Are you in favour of that approach? And the Green Party as well standing beside, aside in each of those. Look, we did it the different way in 2017. Everybody looked after their own parties interests and the result was 10 MPs who have gone and consistently voted uh, and campaigned and negotiated for harder forms of Brexit. So it hasn't been comfortable and I don't think it was an easy decision for any of those parties uh, to make but we've got to put aside our party advantage and try and look after the interests of people here. The right and honourable thing to do was to try to honour that result but to do so in a sensible way. Unfortunately we haven't had a sensible or what good deal and that is why DAP we haven't made. supported it. I, I just don't think that adds up because for a start uh, the DUP did oppose. There's no good form of Brexit, there's no sensible Brexit, but certainly the May deal, and we didn't love it, but it's far, far uh, better for Northern Ireland than, than the Boris Johnson deal. But the point is the DUP had the power. They had the UK government in the palm of their hands for two and a half years, and they consistently pushed away solutions and ruled out every pragmatic solution that would have tried to find some uh, space between um, the outright damage of Brexit and if they were so keen to, 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 to honour uh, the vote. But the fact is, people in Northern Ireland, and particularly in our constituency in South Belfast, voted substantially to remain. But So the DUP can say that we want a sensible Brexit, but they have pushed away every possibility of that. Do you accept that, believe, don't you, in the SDLP, that the danger of a unity poll would be to repeat the binary choice, the divisions of Brexit? Brexit has, as you say, been an absolute game changer. It has laid out very clearly the imbalances within the United Kingdom and I suppose the, the regard or, or lack of regard that a lot of uh, London-based politicians in particular have for, for the welfare of, of, of people here and it has, um, it will damage the economy. So they're all push factors away plus a dynamic outward So what do we do? Dublin. Citizens' so, Assembly, a poll, yes, what do I we do? Yes, I think so. I think Brexit has shown us how you don't do constitutional change, how you don't ask a big question with a yes, no answer. Uh, without any preparation but I think um, a dynamic has been inserted at the moment there's no bandwidth whether in Dublin or London to, to deal with at the moment but once we know the shape of Brexit then yes I think we should if you look back to the New Ireland forum in the 80s it, it brought a lot of new facts and analysis mm -hmm. uh, and, and credible stuff into the public uh, discourse and I think that would be a good direction uh, to take. Clearly um, as John Hume told us uh, a New Ireland is about uniting people not territory. Brexit unfortunately has not united people in any way but it has made people think okay. about the question. And if not if this, the strike is due to escalate on the 18th, there's 50 million there that can only be released by a minister. Is Stormont going to be back in time to fix this by Christmas, Claire Hannah? I mean it has to and I think uh, you're here that door after door after door and the parties that have the mandate and the responsibility to form an executive I hope are hearing that loudly and clearly as well and that was something the SDLP cautioned about you know three years ago when this happened collapsing Stormont is the easy part putting it back up um, is the other and getting DUP and Sinn Féin both in the right frame of mind at the right time has proved very difficult but we know there won't be a perfect time um, and absolutely none of the issues that were outstanding including the dreadful um, cult culture of of poor governance that, that the Assembly yeah, had that sustained. Um, none of them are resolved by not having an Assembly. The fact that nobody has been steering the ship in health and in many other areas has contributed to the rot and decay in terms of organisational culture, that nobody's showing leadership, but also that key decisions were just mounting up and mounting up. Um, what people want. Let's get back into Stormont and talk about these issues, get these issues resolved while we're dealing with education, health or okay, public services and spending that money the DUP achieved for I North think Ireland. it's worse than that. 
that, we're not even arguing about whether there should be an Irish... It's, it's about what the Irish Language Act should, should be called. And I think uh, the DUP aren't being uh, truthful there about, about things that they'd previously rejected. And this £1.5 that they talk about is given with one hand yeah. and taken away with the other in terms of propping up an austerity to government. And indeed, the, um, the, the shock the to our economy that even uh, the last three years of Brexit has had let me hear before it even happened. To, and let me hear there's, just, there's a disconnect between um, the words that people are saying and I suppose their practice in, in, in government. And it has been, um, it isn't just about filling you know, the bums on the chairs around the table. It does have to be uh, about a sense of common purpose around the table and moving away from doing business just by red lines and vetoes. And, and refusing to do something is the same as refusing not to do it until you okay. get They're both uh, a veto. Jeremy Corbyn or Boris Johnson? Well, quite clearly, Jeremy Corbyn, and I'm not, a, I'm not a mega fan, but his interests will align with people and working people and people who need public services here okay. many, many more times than Boris Johnson.